Hey YouTube, welcome to the IPv4 Subnet Mastery video series. This video series will be all you need to become a subnetting pro. This is video one, where we lay the foundation. We will answer the core question, what is subnetting, then talk through every attribute you can extract from a subnetting problem. First, we wanted to answer the question, what is subnetting? Subnetting is nothing more than taking one network and dividing it into subnetworks. For example, this is the 10.0.0.x network. It includes every IP address from 10.0.0.0 through 10.0.0.255. This set of IPs contains 256 IP addresses. This is referred to as a slash 24 network. If you're unfamiliar with that terminology, don't worry, it'll make more sense later. The process of subnetting is simply taking one network and breaking it up into smaller networks. For instance, I can take this slash 24 and break it up into two equal slash 25s. First 25 includes the IP address 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 through 127. The second slash 25 includes the IP addresses 10.0.0.128 through 255. I could also break the slash 24 into four equal parts, or even eight equal parts. In each case, I'm taking the original slash 24 network and dividing all 256 addresses into smaller sub networks. I also have the option to mix and match. Here, I've taken the original slash 24 and broke it up into a slash 25, two slash 27s, and a slash 26. When you divide one network into subnetworks, there are seven pieces of information you can extract from each subnet. Every subnetting problem you'll ever encounter will require you to solve for one or more of these seven items. For the rest of this video, we will define what each of these items are. The rest of the videos in this series will explain how to solve for them. We will start with the bottom two. The number of IP addresses is simply the total number of addresses in each block. We mentioned earlier that the original slash 24 had a total of 256 addresses. We initially broke them up into two equal halves, which means each half contains 128 addresses. Then we broke them up into eight equal subnetworks, which means each slash 27 contains 32 addresses. That is all the number of addresses are. It is simply the total count of addresses in each subnet. We've been referring to subnetworks as slash 25s or slash 26s or slash 27s. This is known as CIDR notation. A CIDR notation simply identifies the size of a particular subnet. There's another way to define the size of a subnet, and that is known as the subnet mask. You will need to know how to convert between subnet masks and CIDR notation. For example, a slash 25 can be represented as the subnet mask 255.255.255.128 and a slash 27 can be represented as 255.255.255.224. In both cases, the CIDR or subnet mask simply indicate the size of a particular subnet, or essentially the number of IP addresses in each subnet. Something else you'll need to know to solve for when subnetting is the network ID. The network ID is simply the first possible address in each subnet. In our slash 25, this would be the IP address 10.0.0.0. In our slash 27, this is the IP address 10.0.0.128. You'll also need to solve for the broadcast IP. This is the last possible address in each subnet. For our slash 25, this would be 10.0.0.127. For our slash 27, this would be 10.0.0.159. Both the network ID and the broadcast IP serve a special purpose in each subnet. Therefore, they are not allowed to be assigned to any user who is receiving an IP address within the IP block. For example, in the slash 25, users could be assigned the IP addresses .16, .24, but they can't be assigned the IP addresses 10.0.0.0 or .127. Which means, in the slash 25, there was a total of 128 addresses, but only 126 of them are usable. Or, in the slash 27, which had a total of 32 addresses, but only 30 of them are usable to be assigned to hosts. The function of the network ID, along with the CIDR or subnet mask, is to identify a specific subnet. For example, you can refer to this block of addresses using the notation 10.0.0.128/27. Be careful though, because the network ID alone isn't enough. It must be coupled with the CIDR or mask. For example, if we use the network ID 10.0.0.0, .0 .0, 
with a mask of slash 24. This refers to all 256 addresses. But if we use the same network ID with a mask of slash 25, this would refer to just this chunk of 128 addresses. The broadcast IP is a special address in each subnet that allows a user to speak to every other IP within the subnet. For example, if there were 10 hosts in this slash 25 network, I could speak to all of them at the same time by sending a packet to the IP address 10.0.0.127. Now that we understand what the network ID and broadcast IP are, and that they are not usable as host addresses, we can see the importance of being able to solve for the first host IP and the last host IP. These two values will give us our usable IP range. The first host IP is simply the IP address immediately after the network ID. In our slash 25, our network ID was 10.0.0.0. Therefore, our first host IP is 10.0.0.1. In our slash 27, our net ID was 10.0.0.128. Therefore, our first host IP is 10.0.0.129. The last host IP is simply the IP address immediately before the broadcast IP. In our slash 25, the broadcast IP was .127. Therefore, our last host IP is 10.0.0.126. In our slash 27, our broadcast IP was .159. Therefore, our last host IP is 10.0.0.158. And finally, we've arrived to our last attribute, the next network. The next network is simply the network ID of the subnet that follows. For our slash 25, the next subnet is this one right here. And the network ID of that subnet is 10.0.0.128. Therefore, the slash 25's next network is 10.0.0.128. But there is also another potentially easier way to solve for the next network. Notice, the slash 25's next network of dot .128 was exactly one more than the broadcast IP. The next network will always be the IP address after the broadcast IP. In our slash 27, since the broadcast IP address was dot .159, the next network would consequentially be dot .160, which indeed would be the network ID of the following subnet. Notice, dot .160 is the first IP address in the subsequent slash 27. These are the seven attributes of subnetting. Hopefully now you understand what each of them are. Every subnetting question you'll ever receive will simply require you to solve for one or more of these seven items. This video series will illustrate the most efficient way to determine each of these attributes. We will be using a cheat sheet to simplify the calculations. The next video will show you how to draw the cheat sheet. The video after that one will show you how to use it. With this cheat sheet and the instructions in this video series, you'll be able to solve for all seven of these attributes in 60 seconds or less.